Hello, let's discuss Henry's law in this video. There are nine types of solution. We discuss all these types of solution. We discussed in the first video of the solution chapter, in which the gas is solute gas, which is in solute form, dissolved in liquid, which is taken as a solvent. This is a very important type of solution, and this type of solution is very important for learning Henry's law. So we take this type of solution. Examples for this type of solution is all aerated drinks we can take that is carbon dioxide in water that is carbonated water. So let's discuss the solubility of this gaseous solute in liquid solvent. The factors affecting this solubility is the nature of the solvent, temperature and pressure. First we take the nature of the solute and solvent. If you take polar solute that will be dissolved in polar solvents. So what do you mean by polar ionic separation? You take an example hydrogen chloride gas. Hydrogen will give one electron, chlorine will give one electron and they will share the electron to form a covalent bond. But this shared pair of electron will be attracted towards chlorine due to its high electronegative character getting a partial negative charge on chlorine and partial positive charge on hydrogen. So, this since there is an ionic separation in this compound, it is taken as a polar compound. And this polar compound will be dissolved in polar solvents like water. Water is taken as a polar solvent because oxygen and hydrogen, they will share a pair of electron to form a covalent bond. But this shared pair of electron will be attracted towards oxygen because of its high electronegative character, getting a partial negative charge on oxygen and hydrogen gets the partial positive charge. Similarly, in this side, that is between oxygen and this hydrogen, and then so this oxygen gets two partial negative charge and this hydrogen gets a partial positive charge. Since there is an ionic separation in this compound, this is taken as a polar compound. So, the polar gaseous solute like hydrogen chloride dissolves in polar solvents like water. Next, we will go to temperature. So, when you increase the temperature, what happens to the solubility of the gaseous solute in liquid solvent? It decreases because the gaseous solute when dissolved in liquid solvent to form a solution, the, this reaction is an exothermic reaction, delta H is negative. So, for exothermic reaction, when you increase the temperature, the increase in temperature cannot be used to process the uh, solubility. So, what will happen? The solubility decreases. This is one reason. Another reason, you can take the thermodynamic equation equation delta G is equal to delta H minus 3 delta S where delta G is the en free energy change, delta H is the enthalpy change, delta S is the entropy change. Entropy means randomness or freeness of gaseous solute particles. When gaseous solute is dissolved in liquid solvent, their freedom is uh, uh, decreased. So, what happens? They will be bound with the interaction with solvent molecules. So, their randomness or free movement of the gaseous solute will be decreased. It is suppressed. So, what will happen? Delta S will become negative because entropy will become negative because of the decrease in randomness of the gaseous solute in liquid solvent. So, delta H is negative, delta S is negative. So, minus T you will have. So, minus into minus plus you will have. Now, you, when you take delta G, the delta G should be negative for any spontaneous process. Suppose if you take the uh, dissolution of gaseous solute in liquid solvent, if it is spontaneous, then delta G should be negative. So, in order to have this uh, process spontaneous, delta G should be negative. When will you have delta G negative for this? So, when you have temperature low, when you have low temperature, then delta G will be negative. So, when you in increase the temperature, solubility increases. But when you increase the temperature, solubility decreases. Then next we will go to pressure. So, when you increase the pressure, the solubility of the gaseous solute and liquid solvent increases. You take this example. This already I have discussed. Again, we will discuss for learning Henry's law. So, you take a solution in a closed container and where you have a solvent, dissolved, where you and gaseous solute are dissolved in the solvent to form a solution. So, this is under normal condition. Now, when you increase the pressure, so what will happen? More and more gaseous solute will be dissolved in the solvent to form a solution. So, what will happen when you, the, the, the solubility of the gaseous solute increases when you increase the pressure. So, now you write that pressure is directly proportional to solubility because when you increase the pressure, solubility increases. Therefore, pressure is directly proportional to solubility. But solubility in turn is related to uh, 
concentration because the solubility uh, will define how much of uh, solute is dissolved in the solvent. So we can say that that will give the strength of the concentration of the solution. So we can say that the solubility is indirectly related with the concentration term. Concentration term we have molarity, molality, mole fraction. But here we are taking mole fraction because it is a temperature independent term. So now you can try the pressure of the gaseous solute is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solute itself solution. So, the solubility is replaced by the mole fraction of the solute in solution because the pressure is directly proportional to solubility. Solubility in turn related to concentration term like mole fraction. So, we are replacing the solubility with mole fraction of solute in solution. So, remove the proportionality you can introduce a constant KH. KH is nothing but Henry's constant. So, you can write the pressure that of the solute, partial pressure of the solute is equal to the Henry's constant into the mole fraction of the solute in solution. This is what we call it as Henry's law. So, we define Henry's law like this. The partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the gaseous solute in the solution at low concentration. So, the partial pressure of the solute is equal to KH into the mole fraction of the solute in solution. This equation is in the form of a straight line equation y is equal to mx. So, you can take y in, in y axis you can take partial pressure, in x axis you can take mole fraction here for example hydrogen chloride gas. You will be getting a straight line whose slope will be equal to the Henry's constant KH. Now, we will go for the limitations of uh, this Henry's law. Only less soluble gases obey this law like oxygen, nitrogen, they will obey this law. Gases which obey Henry's law should not undergo any association or dissociation when dissolved in solvent. Gases when react with solvent, they should not react. They, when gases when dissolved in liquid solvent, they should not react with the solvent. For example, if we take ammonia gas, when dissolved in water, it will form ammonium hydroxide that will exist as ammonium plus ion and OH minus ion. Such compound will not uh, obey Henry's law. So, you can take a deep sea divers where they will carry a compressed air tank which contains oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, etc. When they go under the deep under the water where there is a high pressure. And these gases they do not dissolve in blood or other fluids at normal pressure. But when they un 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 go under deep under the water where there is a high pressure, where the nitrogen dissolve in the body fluids eh, as well as in the blood. So, what will happen the, when the divers come to the surface? The dissolved nitrogen will come, will try to come out of the blood and uh, form bubbles in the bloodstream. And these bubbles restrict the blood flow. Uh, even it will affect the nerve impulses and cause some burst in the capillaries. So, this is what we call it as pains. So, nowadays, instead of nitrogen, they are using helium because helium is less soluble and it is also in small size, so it can easily go through the cell wall. So, this is one information about this. Uh, solubility. Next we will do one problem. 0 0.24 gram of a gas dissolved in 1 liter of water at 1.5 atmospheric pressure. Calculate the amount of dissolved gas when the pressure is raised to 6 atmospheric pressure at constant temperature. So, here only uh, two things are given. One is pressure. Pressure at two different pressures are given. That is pressure 1.5 atmospheric pressure and 6 atmospheric pressure. So, the pressure P1 you take it as 1.5 atmospheric pressure, P2 you take it as 6 atmospheric pressure. When the pressure is 1.5 atmosphere, then the amount will be 0.24 gram. So, you can take X1 as taken as 0.24 gram per liter. So, when the pressure goes to 6, point atm 6 atmospheric pressure, what is the amount they have asked? So, you are asked to calculate this amount. Now, you know the pressure is directly proportional to this uh, concentration or the amount. So, when the pressure is increased to 2, 6 atmospheric pressure, there is an increase in the pressure of 4 poles. So, when the pressure is increased to 4 poles, automatically the amount will be also increased to 4 poles. So, 0 0.24 should be multiplied by 4, you will be getting 0.96 gram per liter because the pressure is directly proportional to the amount. So, when the pressure is increased to 4 poles, automatically the amount should also be increased to 4 poles. They are directly related. Thank you for watching this video. Next video we will discuss vapor pressure. Thank you.